Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have an opportunity to work on a reel that Scott found at a, uh, a flea market out on the West Coast. It's a Shakespeare reel, built like a watch. And let's see what we have. Well, we have one that's probably in the original casing. Uh, we have a Shakespeare Wonder Reel Deluxe 1922. That's not the date, that's the, uh, uh, the model it carries. And it says model GE. Well, Shakespeare uses a special decoder. Well, not real special, but there's model numbers here. G is the 40s and E is 6. So this reel was made in 1946, right after the war ended and production on reels were starting again. This one looks like a beautiful example of a Shakespeare reel in wonderful condition. Oh. And a reel that, well, probably hasn't seen any oils or greases in a while. Well, we're going to take this reel apart. I'm going to show you how it's made and how to service it, how to keep it fishing for a long time to come. Well, as we get started, we want to remove the exterior pieces and parts. And while I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting, what I'm posting, and while well, you can see if it's a a video that you would like to, to watch and enjoy and, and learn more about the particular fishing reel. I work on all kinds of fishing reels. This one's an, a vintage freshwater round bait caster and uh, well tomorrow it might be an ocean trolling reel or a bass low profile reel. We never know but that's half of the fun of doing this one. Uh, I need to shut my camera off for a second and get a nut driver to remove that handle nut. Okay, well I did get the, the nut driver. It's a 5 16 nut that is holding it on. Beautiful example of the reel and kind of what, what was appropriate at the day. That handle nut does have a little bearing in there to allow you to oil. We're going to remove this. This reel is a very clean reel. I love to see them in that condition. Sometimes I get questions on this collectible reels. Should I or shouldn't I service them? How should I clean them? Do I want to ruin the patina? Things like that. Well, this is a nickel silver plated one. You can go ahead and clean the, the face of this one. And well, while you're at it, you can certainly replace the oils and greases just like a normal service would be on this reel. I discourage scouring it, which might uh, mar the surfaces. And uh, well, just uh, be careful as you work on it. This reel has a line saver. It's a little insert here. You should be able to find somewhere on here. Generally, you can find the split in it. That might be the spool itself. But line was very expensive back in uh, 1946. So you wanted to conserve as much line as you could. If you were using this reel in a freshwater environment, you don't need 100 or 300 yards of line. So that space saver there would allow you to just kind of line up the reel on the uh, the base and, and kind of go from there in terms of uh, how it was worked. All right, we should be able to remove this now. You'll see it's a main drive on this one and uh, it has two drives. The, the big wheel is going to run the line guide assembly. The little wheel is going to spin the spool. Well, this is a little plastic or rubber insert to it. You want to make sure it's clean. We're seeing that there's some dirt here. These tend to get very fragile, so if you have one of these, just treat it with care. You're not going to be able to replace it, so just make sure that as you're doing this that you understand the uh, importance of being kind and gentle to it. I'm going to remove the spool. We have a bushing, I believe, on this side. This is a little bit unfortunate, that bushing it's a little stuck, so what I'm going to do on that is just load it up with some penetrating oil. Just lean that here for a little bit of time to, to let that seep in. We also have the line guide assembly here. I'm going to move that line guide assembly over to the right hand side. It houses a pole and inside the, the little cover here is where the pole is. And when you service these reels, you want to make sure that the pole is clean and lubricated. I'm not sure which piece of this is making the noise. 
it's pretty apparent that all of these pieces have uh, not been serviced in quite some time. That makes sense. You saw how this one came in. It came in in a little uh, container or bag. This one was very tight to get out. Here's your pawl. And uh, well, you want to check the two points on the pawl. Make sure that those points are even. You want to make sure that if there is any dirt on there that you clean it off. And you certainly want to make sure that the shoulders of the pawl, these two parts right here, one on each side of that uh, projection that comes out uh, are all nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a drop of oil in there because this was kind of tight coming out. Let's see if some of that can work its way back in. This is where big fingers, tiny spaces, and the camera don't always cooperate with one another. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my pressure on the point here until I feel that that pawl has kind of worked its way into the gap. That seems to be it now. Move it back over to the side, get that cover. And again, with all these pieces and parts, you want to be very careful in managing the parts that you take off. If you lose one, you're going to be in trouble. This reel is 70 plus years old. I guess it's almost 80 years old. You certainly do not want to go searching for a part. They will be difficult to find. Okay, I'm going to put the cover piece back on. Then I'm going to use the oil on the line guide itself. I don't use grease. Some folks like to think that uh, grease is a better alternative. I don't because if you're working fishing this reel in a, in a dirty place or in a place like a uh, salt water environment where you're going to have micro sands and salts in the air, in both of those cases those are going to stick into the grease and when they stick into the grease the uh, they're going to act as an abrasive compound. Okay, there's two screws that are holding that main gear assembly on. That's why we are removing them from the plate. This reel is a true knuckle buster. There is no anti-reverse on this one. When you're casting, the handle is going to move backwards. And when you're revealing, it's going to move forward. You want it to take that assembly off because if there is any dirt back here, you want to clean it off. And you do want to get a little bit of grease and please use fishing reel grease, I'm using pen precision reel grease, into the slot where that spool is going to ride. Take those two screws and put them into my parts tray just so I don't lose them. Now this should just be riding on a post here. This is a single piece and you can tell just how beautifully this reel was machined at the time just by the, the gears, on the, the cutting on the gear and the material that the gear is made from. I guess if there's somebody was trying to make this reel today, they probably would make it out of plastic and pot metal. But uh, back in the day, and well, you can see it's a survivor. Back in the day, uh, they made it with high quality materials and, uh, well, hard to beat. There is a little bit of dried grease onto the bridge, so I'm going to use a cotton swab to take that off. And where I can't reach with the cotton swab, I'm just going to use a paper towel to clean that post. Once I do that, I want to apply a little bit of grease to the post. And then we can put the assembly back. With the assembly back, we can put that into our case. Probably want to get a little bit of grease onto the shoulders here, which are going to ride inside that case bushing. Don't put a lot on there, but put it, quote unquote, enough. All right, this should go this way. You want to align those case screws with the side case. Then go back into your parts tray, grab those two screws. Well, somewhere around here I have a little screw starter. If I can find it, I will use it. Here we go. I always thank Dick for sending this one in. Again, when you try to navigate Small screws with big hands doesn't necessarily work out in your favor very often. 
unfortunately the slot on this one is just a little too small for that screw starter. So we're back to, well, doing it the way I guess we normally would do it. Try to line it, bring it up and in. And it looks like, well, those of you that know me know it's time for you to go for the beverage of your choice. Take a little break. Come on back shortly. We'll be fine. Okay. That's one is in. Come back on the other side, put this one in. So there's not much to maintaining this reel. That's one of the, I think, enduring factors of that. There's a lot of reels today, they, they've got so many different things going on in them. I don't think complex is necessarily the answer to everything either. So, when you look at the simplicity of this, the double use of that gear, for example, the, uh, where it drives both rather than having two separate gears on it, things like that, and just kind of make it appreciate how the reel was built. Okay, got all of that in. If you didn't uh, work before to put that dab of grease, you can come in on this side, remove that cap, and put the grease on. Well, okay, let's bring out those parts that are going to be the finish of this assembly. I'm going to start by putting a little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool on both sides. Let's insert that spool into the cavity here. Next up then is the there's a little gear here. I don't know if I showed this removal. I'll show it putting it back in. This is the line guide gear. Put a bit of grease onto that, into the post for the line guide. Make sure that that seats all the way down. This is your um, spacer plate that we talked about earlier. Find the insert here, a little indentation. That's going to allow you to line up the holes on this. Make sure that you have a nice flush tight section here. Now we can go ahead and take that side plate. And the side plate, the naming is always going to be on the top opposite the real foot. So that's a good way to line this up as well. There we go. Go into your part string, get those small screws. This may be another opportunity for those of you that like to get beverages because, well, me and these little screws are going to have some fun here too. Um, while I'm putting these back in, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you want to find out more about these post-war uh, Shakespeare reels. Maybe there's a question you have regarding the servicing of them. Maybe you want to know a little bit more on the dating of those reels. Whatever. If you leave those in the comment section, that's the best way uh, to get a response from me. I know some folks, uh, they're in a hurry. They want to make the phone call. They see the number on the back of the video here on the business card. I can only tell you that when I'm doing a video like this, I can't answer the phone. And, uh, well, if I have a very busy season doing the reels, I'll the phone call kind of become the last to be returned, not out of any disrespect to anybody, but it's just kind of the way that uh, it gets worked. I do eventually try to return those calls, but uh, again, the comment section for the video, and you can leave a question on any, uh, any reel, any question you have in this comment section, it doesn't have to be on this reel. I do try to, uh, to try to help you do it yourself, and I know a lot of times folks jump out, try to do something, and well, something doesn't go according to plan. I understand that completely. It doesn't always go according to plan when I do reels either, so uh, I do try to help out there. All right, one more screw here. Somebody mentioned I, that they see me use my thumb to guide my screwdriver. I don't know. That's just a habit I picked up at some point. You're certainly welcome to use that if, uh, well, if that helps you to steady the, the bleed as well. If we did not take all this apart and lube that post underneath, you could uh, put a drop of oil in there now. And if you don't even want to disassemble, just find an oiler that has that little uh, spout on it and go ahead and just go into that uh, piece there do it that way. 
Well, when we started this reel, it was a very noisy little guy, uh, creaking with old age. We heard a lot of uh, grunting and groaning going on there. So what did we do? We removed every piece of this assembly. We took the main gear out. We uh, greased and lubed that. We took the line guide and the pole out. Uh, inspected the pole, made sure that the pieces were all good. Oiled the, the sides there. Same thing with the spool. We should have a nice, easy, quiet reel. Look at that. As I mentioned, this is a uh, knuckle buster. When you go to cast, it will back the handle. There is no anti-reverse for this. And if you're casting like this, well, that's why they call it a knuckle buster. The forward speed, you provide the drag on this. There are no drag washers in here. No ball bearings, but I'll tell you what, it'll go against the best of the, the reels that have ball bearings by today's standards. If you want to put a little more tension on the spool to uh, help with backlash, this is your spool adjuster, move it in. If you want to have it run more freely, back it off a half a turn or so and it'll spin more freely. Well, that's it. That's your Shakespeare Wonder Reel Deluxe, made in 1946, right after uh, World War II. And uh, while well, this one's a beauty, Scott, I'm glad you found it, and even more glad that you uh, sent this in for service. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.